Daddy switch to Postum? Your father says there's no caffeine in Postum. Nothing to spoil your sleep. And your father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as Father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by Instant Postum, the good-tasting drink that's entirely caffeine-free, and by Post's 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest-selling brand flakes. <laughs> Oliver Wendell Holmes once described home as a place that our feet may leave, but not our hearts. And for once in the white frame house on Maple Street, none of the feet are leaving and all of the hearts are there. Margaret is absorbed in reading. Kathy is spread-eagled on the floor with her comic books. Betty is studying a fashion magazine. And Bud is busily munching an apple and a banana, both at the same time. Jim is contemplating his son with wonder. Like this. Bud, yes, Dad? How do you do it? Do what? You just got up from a big dinner. Meat, potatoes, vegetables, and a big piece of pie. He had two pieces, not counting the one he ate in the kitchen. Oh, so that's where the rest of the pie went. Isn't that where the rest of any food goes around here? Margaret, is he normal? That's good, dear. Well, now, there's a real intelligent answer. <laughs> yes, dear. Kitten, would you mind peering over your mother's shoulder and see what she's reading? She's reading a magazine. I know that. Margaret, what are you reading that's so fascinating? Of course, dear. Well, <laughs> that clears up everything. If you really want to know, Father, she's doing some research on happy marriages. What's she reading that junk for? You wouldn't understand, Dopey. Dear, may I borrow your pencil? Oh, so you are here. Hmm? Here? Why, of course. What's the matter? Margaret, we've been talking about you. Weren't you listening? No. Should I have been? Mommy, aren't you happy married to Daddy? Why, Angel, where did you ever get such an idea? Well... Honey, what's this sudden interest in matrimonial problems? Mother is just looking up the reasons why some marriages are happy and others aren't. Some women have a spiritual contentment, an inner radiance. You can see they're not only happy outside, but happy inside. I'm hungry. But... <laughs> well, I'm not happy inside. You're not a woman either. Thank goodness for small favors. <laughs> Margaret, just what is this research you're doing on happy marriages? Oh, it's such fun, Jim. I don't know when I've enjoyed anything as much. I've been reading a survey on complaints of wives. Complaints? What kind of complaints do these lovely ladies make, Margaret? Well, listen to this. Very few women complain about the big things. It's the small, irritating habits of their husbands that annoy them most. <laughs> like not shaving on weekends. 75% of wives object to their husbands' beards. <laughs> you find that amusing? <laughs> of course. I know just how they feel. Well, it strikes me that if the only complaint a woman has is her husband's <laughs> refusal to shave on weekends, she's a very lucky woman. You're right, dear. I only meant... Why don't you shave on weekends, Father? Me? How did I get in on this? What's wrong with shaving? I think it would be fun. Ralph's father always shaves every single day, and he looks simply marvelous. Just the same. I imagine it is a nuisance to shave every single day. And I don't blame your father for getting careless now and then. <coughs> yes, I... Careless? Me? Well, aren't you? When I get married, I'll expect my husband to shave every single morning and twice on Sundays. Fine, Betty. We'll keep your room ready so you can come back home and live with us. <laughs> well, I don't see why. If a man cares enough, he'll try to keep attractive for his wife. I believe your mother finds me attractive. Of course I do. Your father doesn't look that bad with a beard. Well, thank you. I think... I don't see why you're all picking on Daddy I heard Mr. Johnson say he'd like to wear old dirty slacks around the yard like Daddy does Because he looks so comfortable What? So there So where? 
I'm not sure I like your defense, kitten. It seems to me we're making a big fuss over a very little thing. But, Mother, you said it's the little things that irritate women. Well, yes, but let's be reasonable. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of amusing things in this article. Why don't you read it, Jim? Read it out loud, Daddy. This is fun. Isn't it? Ha, ha. Well, let's see what else it has to say. I quote, Another complaint of the majority of women is the fact that men forget romance once they're married. Now and then, they'd like to have their husband bring home some flowers. Oh, for heaven's sake, Margaret, do you really enjoy this sort of thing? Daddy, why don't you bring flowers home to Mommy ever? Oh, dear, this is getting out of hand. Let's change the subject. On the contrary, I'm beginning to understand <laughs> your fascination for it. Oh, I'll get it. It's probably for me. I'm going out and get something to eat. Mother, did you see how red Father was getting? <laughs> I guess we were kind of mean. But it was fun teasing him a little. Are you almost through with your speech, Mother? Not quite, dear. I still have to make more notes on it. But I find I can get most of my information from this book. See? Careers for Married Women. I wonder why the Professional Women's Club chose you to make a speech on careers for housewives. You're not a businesswoman. Well, they just want the housewife's point of view. You see, it will be sort of a debate. Mrs. Stuyvesant is going to speak for careers for married women, and I'm to speak against it. I think I'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I wonder how Father would feel if you ever decided to go to work. <laughs> he wouldn't be able to stand it, I know. Margaret, have you seen my appointment book? It's upstairs, dear. I'll get it. I wonder if Daddy was really getting worried. Well, let him worry. It's good for a man sometimes. Never mind the appointment book, honey. I don't... She's upstairs looking for it, Father. Nothing to eat in the whole darn house. <coughs> you know, we never did find out why your mother's doing this research on happy marriages. Maybe she's trying to make you happier. <laughs> she couldn't. Mommy's been working on that for a week, Daddy. She made a lot of notes out of this book. What book? Let me see that. Careers for Married Women. Careers? Gosh, you don't think Mom wants to work, do you, Dad? Oh, don't be foolish, son. She's probably reading it because, well, because, well, just for her own amusement. You think it's funny? Well, you know how it is. Women sometimes have a strange sense of humor. Let's read some of this and see. Would you like to be a consultant, a counselor? a personnel manager. Married women are particularly suited for these positions because of their knowledge of people. You gotta be married to know people? <laughs> Look at this one, Daddy. Would you like to be a model mother? There, you see. If there's one ambition your mother has, it's to be a model mother. You mean she wants to pose for fashion magazines? Who, your mother? <laughs> Let me look at that again, Kathy. <laughs> If you look gracious and wear clothes well, there is a demand for your type in the fashion world. Holy cow. Mom wears clothes real good. Yes, doesn't she? Uh, Margaret? Margaret? What is it, dear? Uh, what's all this about your becoming a fashion model? A fashion model? What on earth? Gosh, are... Mom, you're not going to get your picture in those fancy magazines, are you? Why, I wouldn't think of... You wouldn't go to work and leave us, would you, Mommy? Besides, you can't be a model. You're too old. Too old? Now, just a minute, kitten. Your mother and I may be older than you are, but we don't go back that many generations. Uh, I, I didn't mean you were real old. I, I only meant you... You... Yes, go on. Well, golly, I think Mommy's beautiful. But isn't she too big to be a model? <laughs> big? She doesn't mean big. Well, what does she mean? Oh, round, maybe. <laughs> round? Oh, dear, they're such children, so inept at explaining things. What they mean, Mother, is that you're too mature to be a model, that's all. Now, just a minute. I resent all this. For your information, your mother is just about one of the best-looking women in our crowd. In the whole neighborhood, in fact. Well, thank you, dear. I was beginning to feel a little ancient. Me too. <laughs> and when they make better-looking women than your mother, I want to know about it. What for? 
<laughs> you aren't going to be a model, are you, Mommy? Angel, I don't know where you get that. She t- certainly isn't. Jim, I had no intention... A woman belongs in her home. It's her job to take care of her family and do it well. Oh, I think I do that, Jim. And you'll go right on doing it. Well, is that an order? My wife will never go to work if I have anything to say about it. Well, really. Jim, I've never gone against your wishes, but when you begin to think of me as something as unromantic as a kitchen stove, then it's time I did something about it. You mean you're going to go to work? Oh, Mother, you know you're not going to. You told me you were going to make a speech against... It's a woman's privilege to change her mind, and I intend to exercise my privilege. Margaret, I forbid it. You what? I mean, now, honey, be reasonable. You really are too old to be a model, you know. (gasps) That does it. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to look into the possibilities of becoming a fashion model. Oh, no. Now look what you did, Dad. And if it's the last thing I do, Jim Anderson, I'll make you eat those words. Eat? That reminds me. (laughs) I'm not happy inside. (laughs) Neither am I, bud. Neither am I. Poor Bud, poor Jim. They're not happy inside. Maybe they both need a little inside advice, like the kind Ed Prentice has for all of us right now. Ever find yourself cross and nervous, flying off the handle easily? It often happens when you don't get a good night's sleep, doesn't it? Well, you're not sleeping at night may come from the caffeine in coffee and tea. In that case, drinking postum is the answer for you. Because instant postum doesn't have a single bit of caffeine in it. Absolutely none. Nothing to give you coffee nerves or ruin your sleep. Now, that's important because caffeine is a drug a nerve stimulant that may leave you too nervous and upset to sleep properly. Of course, lots of people can take coffee and tea without being bothered, but lots of others can't. So if you're one who can't, switch to caffeine-free postum now. Then see whether you aren't sleeping better, feeling and looking better, too. And say, why don't you give the kids postum? They can drink it as often as they want. Nothing in postum to harm them. And it's mighty good tasting. Perfect for the whole family. Try a jar of instant postum tomorrow. Well, life in the Anderson family has become a thing of beauty, but not a joy forever. Margaret has become a thing of beauty. But the thing that is not a joy is Jim Anderson, who is convinced that Margaret is seeking a career as a fashion model and now doesn't know how to stop her. After some heavy thinking, Jim decides that maybe life in the white frame house on Maple Street has become a little dull for Margaret. So he decides to romance her. Like this. Margaret! I'm home! I'll be down in a few minutes, dear. Take your time, honey. Take your time. Bud! Kathy, Princess, where are you all? Here in the kitchen, Daddy. Come on in. Oh, hi, Dad. Hello, Father. Sit down if you can find a clear place. (laughs) Well, that's about the most enthusiastic greeting I've had in years. Why all the long, long faces? Well, Mother's so changed since she's gone in for that modeling career that we hardly know her. (laughs) Well, don't all be so gloomy. I'm sure I can change all that. You can, Daddy? Oh, I knew you'd think of something. You just leave things to your father. I understand your mother thoroughly. Wait till you see what I brought her tonight. Two dozen gorgeous red roses. Holy cow, you can't eat roses. (laughs) Son, you're missing the point entirely. What is the point, Father? Well, your mother was finding things a little dull, so... She probably yearns for romance, excitement. Sort of like the old days before you children were born. Gee, do you remember that far back, Daddy? (laughs) Well, 
Well, it's a strain, but I manage it. <laughs> Don't you see? If I start bringing roses to your mother and, oh, sort of showing her special attentions, she'll melt like a honey cake in the sun. How could she possibly prefer a business career to my attentions? You really want to know? No, I don't. <laughs> don't be such a drip, bud. Father, I think that's a super idea. Every woman wants to be swept off her feet by a handsome escort, to be lifted to the skies by whispered sweet nothing. Well, anyway, I'm quite certain your mother will respond when I start showing her some of my old charm. She'll forget all about this career nonsense. Shh, everybody, here she comes. Hello, dear children. Sorry to have kept you waiting so long. Well, honey, you've always looked well in gold, but I never knew it could make you look so radiant. Oh. Holy cow. But. <laughs> Mother, that's an utterly dreamy outfit. Wherever did you find it? Oh, it's just an old dress I had. But I took off all the trimmings, altered it here and there, and <laughs> changed the neckline. Didn't you, though? <laughs> Gee, Mommy, you look like Ava Gardner. Don't you think so, Daddy? She always has been beautiful to me. Why, dear, what a lovely thing to say. And speaking of lovely things, may I present you with roses, madame? For the most beautiful rose of all. Oh, Jim, dear. Golly, to think my own mother and father could be so thrillingly exotic. Oh, it's just too dreamy for words. Well, bud, you're the only one who hasn't commented on your mother's loveliness. I'm hungry. <laughs> Leave it to bud to bring us down to earth. Well, shall we all go into dinner and feed the inner man? Now you're making sense. A dinner is just about ready, dear, and Betty knows how to go about the finishing touches. Betty, mm -hmm. aren't you going to eat with us? Oh, but of course, I see. It's high time the children took over some of your chores and lightened your load a little. I heartily approve. That's good, dear. Then I'll be running along now. I'm a little late. Late? For what? It doesn't matter. It was worth it to hear all the nice things you said. Margaret, what is this? Aren't you going to have dinner with us? Why, no, dear. Didn't I tell you? Oh, I'm so absent-minded these days. No, I won't be having dinner here tonight. But my roses... Uh, I'm terribly sorry. I'd cancel this appointment if I could. But you see, I have to make a speech tonight. Speech? You? Yes, I speak English quite well. <laughs> I'm going to address the Professional Women's Club on Careers for Married Women. Oh, is that where you're going? Yes, dear, I told you about it two weeks ago, remember? Yes, but you said your speech would be against... Uh, don't forget to put the potatoes on, Betty. Mother, could I speak to you privately for a minute? Why all the secrecy? You wouldn't understand. This is between us women. What women? I'm beginning to feel like a sorority sister. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Kathy, be a good girl now. Goodbye, bud. Dad, are you sure you understand, Mom? I'm not sure of anything right now. Goodbye, dear. I won't be long, and I'll tell you all about it when I get back. Well, thank you very much. But don't ask me why. Mother, you're a big faker. Why, Betty? You're still going to make that speech against careers for married women, aren't you? <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> and you're just letting Father think you're in favor of married women working to teach him a lesson because he got so completely stuffy about a woman's place in the home, aren't you? You're growing up fast, dear. <laughs> Mother, you're simply devastating, and I love you lots. Thank you, dear. Goodbye now. See you soon. Goodbye, you career woman, you. <laughs> She said she wouldn't be gone long, and here it is two and a half hours. Why, for all we know, she may be wandering around somewhere with amnesia. Who's he? <laughs> oh, Father, how corn-fed can you be? Well, I don't care. Just isn't like your mother to be late. It just isn't like her. What is like her these days? What Mother's doing is admirable. Admirable? I don't quite go along with her walking out and leaving us and making a speech to get other married women to have a career. She didn't leave you, and she isn't telling them to go to work. She's against it. Oh. Oh, dear. What was that, Princess? Nothing. Nothing at all. I didn't say anything, Father. You sure said a lot for somebody who didn't say anything. <laughs> 
I don't know what you're talking about, I'm sure. Princess. Oh, golly, Father. You might as well know. Yes, especially since I'm going to find out anyway. Mother wanted to teach you a lesson. You deserved it, too, the way you talked to her. So she didn't let you know her research work was for a speech against careers for married women. What? You mean your mother would pull a trick like that on me? It's your own fault. She tried to explain, but every time she opened her mouth, you put your foot in it. Oh, brother. Me and my big fat foot. <laughs> you mean Mommy isn't going to look for a job after all? She never intended to. But if any of you let her know that I told you, I'll positively destroy you. Aw, oh, turn blue. <laughs> Wait a minute, kids. I've got an idea. I'm glad somebody has. I'm lost. <laughs> well, let's be reasonable about this. In a way, your mother is right. We never did give her a chance to explain. And, well, we have sort of been taking her for granted. You mean we haven't been treating her right? Oh, we've been just like any other average family. Sort of forgetting all the good things she does for us and not doing anything for her. Gee, Dad, have we been like that? In a way, I guess we have. What do you think we ought to do, Father? Let's go along with her little act. Let her think we believe she's going to work. When she gets home, let's all be just as unhappy as we were before we knew this. And you leave the rest to me. Oh, gee, this is going to be keen. I always wanted to act. Can I cry, Daddy? Well, maybe a little. <laughs> On second thought, why don't you just forget it, kitten? Now, are we all set? Any questions? When do we eat? <laughs> Tomorrow morning at breakfast. Quiet, everyone. Here she is now. Remember, look miserable. That won't be hard. I'm not happy, happy inside. inside. I know. <laughs> but try to bear up like a man. Hello? Jim? Children? Oh, there you are. Hello, everybody. Oh, I've had such a very enjoyable evening. And you know... I almost think I was successful. It um, was a simply wonderful evening. Well, it was up to now. Ah! Oh, Mommy, it wasn't any fun at all without you here. Ah! Uh, take it easy, kitten. Why, Angel, did you miss me that much? Betty doesn't cook as many potatoes as you do. <laughs> now, Bud, I'm sure Betty gave you a fine meal. She's an excellent cook. We ran out of everything. After the third helping. <laughs> I think you'll survive, Bud. We had a pleasant evening, Margaret. Quiet, but pleasant. Oh, I'm so glad. Of course, it was terribly lonely. But then we had a long talk, the children and I, and we've decided that you're right. You... Have? Yes, Margaret. We realize now how much this means to you, and even though we'll suffer horribly, we'll sit back, uncomplaining, and watch you startle the world with your charm and brilliance. Oh, dear. Jim, children, I have a confession. If there are any confessions, we'll make them. We realize now, Margaret, we've been mistreating you. Mistreating me? We've been hiding your light under a bushel. Dad... Even though it means the destruction of the great harmony in our family, we'll stand by, Margaret, and see you through. Dad. We wouldn't think of letting our love become a burden on you. Dad. What is it, son? Let's not get sickening about it. <laughs> Gee, I thought he was doing swell. Go on, Daddy. It's better than a movie. Please, children, you must realize the gravity of this situation. I know you love your mother, and it goes without saying that I am devoted to her. But she is entitled to a life of her own, no matter how much it hurts us. But, dear, you know I wouldn't think of spoiling our family life. Well, not intentionally, of course. Not anyway. Listen to me, all of you. I never, never intend to have a business career. I just pretended I was because, well, you goaded me into it, that's why. But, Margaret, how can you say that when you made a speech tonight favoring careers for married women. Mrs. Stuyvesant favored careers. I said that a married woman should avoid a career if possible. 
To me, there is no finer job than taking care of my family and my home. Margaret, you really mean that? With all my heart. Did you hear that, Princess? Kitten? Bud? Your mother wasn't your mother for a while, but now your mother is your mother again. Come again? <laughs> Welcome home, Mommy. Angel, I never left you. <laughs> Post brand plates, so good and so good for you. Like that little melody? It's a good tune to remember when you're shopping this weekend because it reminds you that new Post 40% brand flakes are good and so good for you. Yes, they're good because something wonderful has happened to brand. You see, new Post 40% brand flakes now have a delicious magic oven flavor, a new crisp texture that many people prefer to any other cereal. And new Post 40% Bran Flakes are good for you because they contain the important keep regular benefits that Bran is known for. So tomorrow, buy new Post 40% Bran Flakes, America's largest selling Bran Flakes. I think you'll agree, they're good and good for you. <laughs> and serenity reign again in the white frame house on Maple Street. It's late now, and in the upstairs hall, Betty is saying... Mother, I've been trying to get a chance to talk to you all evening. Whatever for, dear? Well, I think it's only fair to tell you. Father found out about your speech before you came home, and he was just putting on an act. Oh, Betty, you didn't tell him. I didn't mean to. It just slipped out. <laughs> I thought he was a little on the dramatic side. <laughs> All right, don't worry about it. I uh, think I'll go in and have a slight talk with your father. Good night, dear. Good night, Mother. Asleep, Jim? Uh, not quite. I just wanted to say you were wonderfully understanding about this whole thing. Oh, it's nothing. But I must say you certainly did a fine job of acting. Had me fooled completely. You know, I was wondering about that. Just think, Jim. A career as an actress. I wonder if I shouldn't go in for dramatics. Oh, no. Well, uh, why don't we discuss it thoroughly tomorrow? Good night, dear. Uh, Margaret. Yes, dear? I don't think I'm happy inside. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest selling brand flakes, and Instant Postum, the drink that's entirely caffeine free. In our cast were Gene Vanderpile as Margaret, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, and Norma Jean Nilsson. It comes in a red, white, and blue box. What is it? Hot Post. It has the picture of Roy Rogers on the package. What is it? Hot post wheat meal. It's packed full of whole wheat nourishment. What is it? Hot post wheat meal. It has a rich, delicious, nut-like flavor. What is it? Hot post wheat meal. Cooks in just three minutes. Another member of the famous post family. What is it? Hot post wheat meal. It's the best hot cereal you ever ate. Hot post wheat meal. <laughs> Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Dina Fields. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, hear Counter Spy on NBC.